What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is I Run Shib, or Shib for short. I appreciate you being here today. The goal of this video is to go through a PvP tier list, specifically focusing on how I think the classes are going to perform in NAEU or the Western release. I'm not saying these classes are necessarily better, more so how I think things are going to play out with 92% plus of the game being played by people that don't know how to play this game. So guys, before we jump into the tier list, I wanted to announce we're going to be giving away three copies of Lost Ark, the Silver Edition. This is going to allow you to get into the game three days early, amongst some other benefits. All I ask you guys to do to enter is to sub to my YouTube here, follow two of my socials, either my Twitch, TikTok, Insta, or Twitter, or all of the above, gets you some bonus points. Uh, and then leave a comment here just saying enter giveaway and just tell me which socials you followed. I'll double check and then I'll put you on the list. Thank you very much and good luck. The winners will be drawn on February 2nd. I'll see you guys then. to talk we're gonna give one liners for every single class as to my reasoning as to where they are but the basis of this tier list is thinking of it like this guys season one 92 percent of everyone playing this game is going to be brand new okay we're treating the game as if it's brand new and those people that have been around for a while especially top tier players are going to have shit ping okay because they're from russia they're from korea the best players have the best ping typically there's some people that are up there with high ping, but it's a different game at high ping. Back into what I'm saying. One-liners for each class. Like I said, Deathblade doesn't require that much skill, can wipe a person with two abilities, has a lot of self-peel and a lot of pop-up. S-tier, this class was made for PvP. That's its one-liner. Shadow Hunter, B plus A-tier, in my opinion. Where did I have it before? Did anyone remember? I think I had it at B plus. Yeah, I think B plus is the way. I think B plus or A tier. A lot of range on this class. It's an ranged assassin build. Um, you know, it has a transformation. If you fuck up your transformation, you are doing the class a massive disservice. That's why I'm keeping it at B. New players aren't going to understand how to maximize that, that transformation. The better you are with it, the better you'll pop off. You can three wipe teams. You can 1v9 with this class. But if you don't do it properly, you're fucked. And up close, you're a little vulnerable. You have a really strong uh, AOE ability as well. Artillerist is A. Very biased, but I do agree that this class is pubbing, pub stomp city. This class bodies new players. It can completely one-shot a player, especially new people. They, they don't know what they're getting into. They're going to walk up close. The, the Artillerist is going to hit you with that bop city B, make you float into the moon as the angels rain bombs from your forehead and your health is gone. If you do not know how to avoid it, if you do not know how to auto to get rid of that chain, uh, your stagger immunity... Or four stagger immunity as he's making a play on you, you're gonna get f***ed. And new players in season one will not know how to deal with that. That being said, season three, four, he's a f BC, sadly. BC tier. Even though it's my baby. Season three or four, he's gonna be a BC tier. Except for when I'm on him, because I'm a lord. We move forward to the Deadeye and Gunslinger. I'm gonna keep these guys together. I'm gonna put the Deadeye and the Gunslinger both in C tier, and here's their one-liner. Hardest class in the entire game. A lot of people see them, and they're visually pleasing as f***. So people think, oh my god, this class is dope. I definitely want to play it. Let's go, baby. They get shit on. They think PvP is impossible, and they quit the game. This class is so hard. You need to understand. You need a good season behind the Dead Eye or the Gunslinger to perform, in my opinion. Or you just need to be really good at video games. Um, you can perform with them and be unbelievable. But in solo, I'm thinking solo rank team composition without a lot of for force peel on you with people that don't understand how to peel yet. That class is going to be a, in big, big trouble. Sharpshooter. A tier. They have invisibility. I almost should end the one-liner right there. They have a shit ton of range and a strong amount of damage with their snipe ability. That shit can do insane damage if it crits, man. The sharpshooter is very strong on an NAEU release. And that invisibility and that range is going to be a big problem for people. They're not going to understand how to get on him. They're not going to send the assassins on his forehead. And they're not going to know what to do when he goes invisible or CCs you. And he's gone. Just going to be lost in space. A good sharpshooter is a big problem. NAEU, he's going to be a big problem. Bard, this is where I have struggle. I like to say keep this as like an A plus and A tier because the Bard does not have that much forgivability. Support should always be S tier in my opinion. But the Bard, so here's how I should word it. If the Bard slips, they're, they're gone. If the Bard slips incorrectly on, like, you know, a new Bard slips and gets caught by a Berserker, they're gone. They have a lot of soft CC. They have a lot of peel, a lot of crazy things they could do for the team. They can be so S tier, it's beyond belief. But if you slip, you're and you've got to be good a tier sorceress similar position throwing them in a tier they don't need to combo well they have a lot of self peel very strong abilities they've got cast times which is you know something i've been hearing if i go i agree with you um 
but the problem, but the thing is with, with sorcerers is that people don't understand really how to deal with them yet. In the beginning, they're really tough to deal with. They don't pair too well with fast characters. Deathblade, you know, you get into your, some of your martial artists, they're going to f*** sorceress up. But if you are a tanky, slow peely class, the sorceress can have their way with you. Scrapper, we could talk about Scrapper again, so here's the go down on Scrapper again. Scrapper, I'm putting at C tier for this reason, guys. Scrapper's very strong. They have a lot of stagger immunity. They have a lot of super armor, but they are slow. And in terms of the martial artists, they are probably the hardest to play, in my opinion. You got to manage this chi situation where you're using two different color abilities. Like, they're, they're C tier for new players. Um, Soul Fist for NAEU release going A tier. They've got an ma energy management system instead of mana. Kind of annoying. Doesn't let you use the moves when you want to use them, but their combos are crazy. They've got three dashes, which makes them OP as hell in the beginning of the game when people don't understand. That movement's just unparalleled. They've got decent range and a lot of damage. A tier. <clears throat> Striker, B tier. Fastest class, as well as a war dancer, in the game. Um, a lot of juggling capabilities, but very little super armor. They get rocked by a big boy and they're in a hell of trouble. They don't have peel. They get caught slipping, they get too aggressive and find it, try to get a back line, and the back line outplays them. They're, they're done. Uh, nothing, you know, nothing more to say other than that. War Dancer, right next to the Striker, a more defensive version of the Striker. I think a lesser version of the Striker. I'd say more B. This Striker's more B plus or maybe B minus and B. War Dancer, it doesn't have Tiger Toss, which the Striker does, which is an ability that it provides them super armor, does a good amount of damage in CC. Um, you know, it's good, it's just good team utilization. The War Dancer, on the other hand, though, has a buff of damage for the team that, if played around correctly, can be incredible. A lot of new players won't understand it or won't even know they have it. So that's why it's going to stay BB minus. Uh, season two, three, they're going to potentially be better than the Striker, especially at top top tier. So I don't want to say this because the vast majority of the public Striker will still be better. Berserker, Berserker's going S tier, maybe S minus. Like I said problem with berserkers their cooldowns are really f***ing long they do a lot of damage they hit hard they can wipe teams and they can group teams in their abilities s tier gunlance is a plus to s minus i really wish i could put it right in the middle of the line um a lot of peel can cc entire teams pretty slow but their dodge is the fastest comeback but it does do a back dash uh, the one liner Strong Team CC, very beefy, self uh, shields that can make you immune um, to everything in CC, and uh, just a pain in the ass to deal with if you're peeling properly. So A plus, S minus, Paladin, S plus, probably with the Bard, the best support in the game in my opinion, because it's a little more forgivable and it could do a shit ton of damage, it can soak a little bit. The Bard has so many awesome abilities that make it very strong as well, so it's tough to say better. It can go either way, whoever's on him could perform better, but the Paladin has more forgivability. It's beefier, it can do a shit ton of damage when it uses its uh, blue, I like to call it, it's, it's an inherent ability where it buffs all of its sword abilities. I think that is where it is. Did I match that up with where I was last time? Yes, I did. Dead on. So, yes, this is exactly how I think. Yeah, dead on. This is exactly how I think this, this will play out, guys, in PvP on, on our release. All right, everybody. So that's going to do it for how I see things playing out on release in terms of a PvP tier list. Like I said, a lot of this is just based on lack of knowledge. This thing is going to greatly change as people understand the game. This is more so a Season 1 tier list for Ranked. If you have any questions, comments, or things you might see differently, put them in the comments below. I'd love to chat about it and see what you're thinking. Thank you very much, and I love you guys.